So hello everybody. Today we're going to be continuing the build of our async HTTP library. Um, last time we started defining our API. So we can see here on the verbs, we sort of have an API here defined where we have our request builder and we have many other things. We have our client here. So there are a couple things that that I would like to perhaps improve upon on this, how do you call this? On, hello, Mohammed, how are you? So improve upon on, on this API. So one thing that, um, that I'm not really sure about is, is this, right? We currently create this HTTP client uh, and we save it in, in a global environment, or well, not a global, but a library specific environment. And I'm thinking perhaps this, this is not the way to do it. Like perhaps what we need is to pass here a client. What, what like, is it, I, I am not very sure of what's the, the best way to, to, to do this sort of things. Like, like, do we need it when we send the the request? Do we need it when we are building the request? Like, that's that's a pretty important question. So we're gonna try to define those sort of small API details and see what works best for what we want to do. And based on that, um, we can continue building our our API because currently we only have a way to send raw. Perhaps we might want to be able to send, how do you call this? Um, send other bodies. So send strings, send JSON, send, for example, I don't know, a file, I think I already said. And we also need a way from when we send the request, be able to fetch the body on a different manner, right? Because we are we are only handling string bodies right now. And maybe we want to stream some data. Maybe we want to like get some raw binary data. We perhaps want to deserialize with some JSON. We'll need to define all of that. So let's go ahead and, and start building. Let's let's do that. Awesome. So the first thing that I that I want to kind of check is here on the live.rs when we define the not the HTTP client but the the request builder do we want the request builder to to be around like do we want to include okay let me let me look at alignment for a second like do we want to have something like the let me go up here see the client is a thread pool and an agent right the agent is easily clonable this is just a 16 this is just a pointer and i'm guessing this is also just a pointer yeah so we can include like the client like do we want this do we want to be able to you have the NHGP client right there. Because in that case, um, we can't really have this. We're going to need to have a, a a function here that maybe it should come out of, out of the client. Sure, that, that, that could be a way. Or we could have like a, a separate function. So we, this could be from client and we should be able to take here uh, a reference to an HTTP client. And then here we can have client equals client.clone. And HTTP client does is not clonable. So let's make this clonable. We arrive or we could like implement it ourselves. So implement clone for HTTP client function clone HTTP client um, thread pool equals solve that thread pool that clone because in the thread pool is not clonable. 
Huh. So that that's an interesting that's interesting because the agent is clonable, right? So we can do self that agent dot clone. Yeah. Okay, so our thread pool is the one that's not that's fine. We can just put this around with a reference counter. Since we're not gonna move the HTTP client across um thread boundaries, right? Even though our thread pool is multi-threaded, our like the object of the thread pool, we are not gonna pass it over to other threads. We can just do a thread self dot thread pool. Amazing. There you go. So now we should be able to to do the clone. So here, HTTP client, amazing, amazing, cool. So then here, when we send the request and perhaps, um, hey, you can try. Yep, yeah, the the I, I I haven't tried Ambiorix, but I've heard wonders of it. So we can wrap this in an option, HTTP client, right? And we can just put this inside of some. Then here, when we do the swap, because we have a default, we can then implement um, implement default for the request builder. And our empty request builder will probably look something like request builder where client is none. Our URL is string new, which if I'm not wrong, doesn't, the verb will be a, probably a get. Our headers will be uh, an empty hash map. And our body will be an empty vector. And this is headers. Cool. So I think we have the, the same API as we had it. Amazing. The only difference here would be that in here, I don't need to pass in the HTTP client anymore. Because the HTTP client is now contained in self. And this would actually be the request builder. Sure. And this can, this client is optional. Well, that we might need to do is wrap this inside our result. And can we pass in a, a static stir? So static stir. Yep. Okay. So what we can do here is dot okay or and what we can do is um this request has already been executed. And then we can question mark it. Given that we should be able to have here HTTP client equals this, and then have our agent equals or HTTP client dot agent. Cool. And then we wrap this in in an OK. Cool. I think we got it. It's perfect. Remove the generic argument. All right. Okay, perfect. So Given this API, um, perhaps what we want to do is instead of starting out with the verb, I'm trying to, I'm kind of copying the, 
the HTTT, well, not copying, but making it quite similar to the HTTTR. So let's set birth or set, set method, add mute self verb equals a stir. dot verb equals verb. So here the verb would be get by default. Amazing. So now based on this, what we would need to do is here create a function called set verb, so set method, sorry. And here we wouldn't need header name, we would need uh, the method. And this would be the method. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Then um, here, instead of having delete, we would need a uh, um, export. We would need request builder. The request builder would take in a client. So function that takes in a client and a URL. And what this will do is that it will have, it will do client. So how do you initialize a client? Um, client view, right? Well, client dollar, oh no, no, that's, uh, I'm, I'm lying. It would be from client, right? So request builder from client, client, and the URL. Super. I think the client should also have this pull interval in itself. So let's go to our HTTP client and let's add a I'm wondering if we can pass this on to Rust. I, I, I'm not sure if we can. That's one of the, like the hard things that, but I'm not sure about. Yeah, let's let's just live it like this. Uh, I think. Um, I think we're going to be forced to do the, the promise polling inside of R directly because I'm, I think later doesn't yet have a C API that we can attach to. I think, and I think promises doesn't, doesn't have one as well. From the last time I read, um, perhaps it's changed since then. So now, because we have this. We just need to send a request. We don't need to pass on a client. And we are good to go. This poll interval, um, perhaps it should be a, like a poll interval. It should be set here. So poll interval. And by default, it should be poll interval. I think this is the probably the best way to do it. And here we can call the internal poll interval. I'm going to ask it to disable the object name launcher because this is a, a constant. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Request builder, set header, set method. Cool. Do we have an example here? We don't have an example. So let's create a an example. Um, where's, where do you place examples in a... Let's just create for now an example that R. Let's first um, do a an R extender document. Let's compile this. I'm gonna drink a little bit of coffee meanwhile.
Oh, something failed. Of course. So this is a pretty easy fix on the live.rs. And so we are not ignoring the vendor folder, I think. Source vendor. Yeah, we need to. Do we need to ignore this? Yeah, we definitely need to ignore this. We don't want all of this. Or do we not? Okay, let's. I'm gonna get ignore that. Dot get ignore. There you go. Okay, so back to our live at RS. Here is the problem. I think we're we're good. Amazing. Now we can do dev tools install. And I think we can set up the as we have on the make. We have if not cran cargo home equals cargo temp else drink some coffee again while waiting for the compiling yeah, sure i i could but i'm 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 taking my time to to what uh, to to read um and try to make this compilation step faster because i think it can be faster just that um Cran is very picky about how you build your R packages. So I think we can set up the not Cran environment variable. So let's do set minus GX, I think, not Cran equals true. There you go. So now we're not in, in Cran mode. N nice. Let's go to the example. I think I had it open. Example um example that are right so let's bring our library async http and uh, i think there's no way to create a client yet verbs yep i think we have so let's do here um at export HG, um new http client and this new HTTP client, what we're going to do is we're going to need to take a couple of parameters, right? So we can have like concurrency, which initially could be equal to four. So here we do HTTP client new. And if I'm not wrong, the HTTP function new. Yep, takes a number of threads. So we can pass in here the concurrency. So how concurrent do we want our client to be? Nice, let's do our extender document. Awesome, look, now we didn't need to compile because um, now we can do DevTools, install DevTools, install. Since we are in not CRAN mode, it should be way faster. If true is not equal to true, right? So this this shouldn't have run. We should be using our whatever cargo we are using. There you go. Amazing. So now we should be able to go into our example and do new HTTP client. So let's create client equals new HTTP client. Let's set a concurrency of four. 
And what we can do for, for this example, if we go into the promises, um, our promises package, I think we have a way of joining multiple, I think joining, that's how they call it. So let me go into the reference. Is it promise, finally promise all, right? And here we can pass in a, a list of promises. So we can do promise, promises, promise all. And in here, what we can have is our um, do request. Yep, that was the function that I was looking for. So let's create a little function that takes in our client, um, pipes it onto request builder. And what was the 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 site from last stream? The one of like I I I forgot how it's called the the website that that we saw on last stream. Well, I think let me I can look for the for the last live stream. Let me go to my channel. Um, live part one. And I had it right here. HTTP stats that US. Okay. HTTP stats dot US. This one. So this is the URL that we're gonna be using. Copy link address. Let's paste this right here. Let's do set method to get. Let's also, yeah, Mohammed, you have such good memory. How do you do this? I, 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 <laughs> I have to look up everything and I, I just, I don't know how you do it. And then we can send a request. Amazing. So we can do here, do request a bunch of times. Re do request. Is that how you do it? Right. And then at the end we have like, we can pipe this to then. So to promises then, and we can print at the end. Okay, what happened on my burv get not supported. Okay, so I think what I need to do is add. Yeah, because I need to add probably, hmm. I probably will need to do some sort of to lower. Hmm. But I don't want to do it too lower case. This is quite slow, but it, it's only an assignation once every couple of things. I think this doesn't matter. Just lowercase yields a string, right? And we can do as stir. Yep. Okay. Um, dev tools install. It's probably going to, need to recompile because it creates a new temporary directory just for this, which I guess is okay. Yeah, but it's fine. I rewatched your video yesterday. Oh, thank you, Mohammed. That's that's great. So you have it. You, you have it more in your mind than I do. Okay, 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 okay. So if this works, because we have a concurrency of four, right? Um, if I run this, attempted to apply a non-function non -function on send request. So on send request, what non-function? Request send request. Oh, but no, that mean we have here request and request. This is 
This is what it does. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. So when I do the the what the the request builder, this is fine. What we're gonna need to do is do a return. So we're probably gonna need to do a return invisible request. Also on the send method. And also on the body raw. And this is because we want to to be able to pipe it um over and over and over. So let's do dev tools install right so yeah we needed the, the invisible self to be able to pipe the request to the next one 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 And we should also create a very cool quote unquote print. Yeah, let's let's do a print next. Let's let's get let's 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 validate that this works and we can do like a print. Okay. Um of course. So what we need to do here is a uh, repeat later run now. So what we're doing here is simulating an event loop. Um, since this script, once it ends, it's done, we need to kind of keep it going for a while. And there you go. We have our, our responses. Oh yeah. And let's do a slash 200. Yep. There you go. We got our four case. So if we add another four, since our concurrency is four and let me take a look back here because I think we can have like the sleep, right? So we can pass in the X HTTP sleep. We can have um, set header. Um, and this is in seconds or in milliseconds. If you want a delay for the sleep duration, it's the time in milliseconds. So yeah, so let's do like 500 milliseconds or let's do 1000 milliseconds. So one second, one full second. Right, so if we do this again, it should take um, expected strings got doubles. Okay, that's one thing we need to handle. So let me do a, a to do. Um, where is the set header? Let's do here um, to do handle other types. Okay, so let's put it in quotes for now. Argument is missing with no default. What argument? Huh. Oh yeah, I'm missing. I have an extra comma. R sometimes has the absolutely worst error messages. <laughs> okay. Okay, there you go. We have our, our 200 responses. And now I'm going to add another four. So it should do this in two batches, right? It should have one batch of four and then another batch of four. Uh, but it's waiting for all of them to complete. So this is not really... Um. Yeah, thank you, Mohamed. You, you, you got it. You got it better than I did. Yeah, maybe a promise all is not what it, what we want. Perhaps we just want like something like this. And we can add like at the end here, the promises, then print. Right, so we just do do request eight times. Yeah, there's always that delay. It's It sucks, but it's kind of like what it is. Yep. So it's in two batches, right? And well, in this case, three batches. I thought I had less than eight. How many do I have? There you go. That's eight. Right? If we make the concurrency now eight instead of instead of four. So let's do our concurrency. One, two, three, four. 
that's eight. If we do the concurrency eight instead of four, we should see it in one batch. There you go, that's one batch. If we do it with two, we should see four batches of two. So first batch, second batch, third batch, fourth batch. Amazing, 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 amazing. So we could set like the concurrency to 1000, probably not recommended. Your system will not appreciate having 1000 HTTP requests being sent at the same time. Um, but we, it's working. We're sending requests in batches as we wanted. Perfect. So now I think what we can do to to kind of make this more fun is let's start building on the on the next part of the API. Because right now we can only send, for example, well, we can only receive string bodies. And I don't know if that's what we want. Like, do we want to you know, be able to only fetch string bodies? I, I, I don't think so. So how do we handle uh, multiple types of bodies? So here on the, on, the, on the send request, what we do basically is um, we send the bytes, which is, this is okay. This is basically what we want. But then we get the response and we turn it into a string. And if I'm not wrong, it turns the response into a string of the response body. By default, it uses body can work. It is potentially memory inefficient for large bodies since the implementation first reads the reader to the end into a back U8 and then it decodes it using a char set. If the response is larger than 10 megabytes, this will return an error. So maybe this is just not what we want. Because I'm guessing we also have other methods for for reading. For example, we can have into reader, right? We can have turn this response into a reader. Because again, we don't we we don't really know um like what it's I don't know if that's the word. Like we, we don't really know the like what we're gonna get we could get like a 10 gigabyte file from an api right so we're gonna need to be able to download that or do something with that file and that's i think what we what we what, what we want to be able to do right here okay 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 let's do this Yeah, it is possible to stream the response. So that's what I was showing of the turning it into a reader. So we need to figure out an API of for making for making this. So currently response is a mutex of container of the response content. And the response content is currently just a string. So maybe this is not what we want. Right? Maybe this should be a Instead of response content, this should like let's have this response internals. And inside here let's have a res, which should be a urec response. And let's set this to response internals. Amazing. This this will definitely not have a default. So let's set this to an option of your rec response. But this is already an option, right? So I think we can just set this to a your rec response and remove this response internals. So now we can have the get content string, right? We can have here content equals none. And here we can have, so we got the response container, swap it. Uh, 
And if I'm not wrong, I can do content dot take. Yeah, we can do that, right? So we can do response container dot. Yep, we can do dot take. So we can have let content equals this. Remove this. We don't need this anymore. And because this is our our response, it should be this function should only be called after a write. So we can do this into string. So what's wrong here? Option response. We expect. All right, this is this can be a result. So let's do a result string. So this can fail. So if the error, we can do into into to turn it into an R compatible error. What's going on here? The trade bound extender API error. We can also do string from Yeah, I don't understand why this isn't working. String so we can do like err to string. There you go. Amazing. So now to query is the approached error. It's into string. Yeah, this, I, I don't see why this isn't working. Do I need to wrap this in an OK? I wouldn't think so because we are doing the map error already. Yeah, this doesn't make any sense. What am I doing wrong? Is it the IO result? Let's try to build this um, CD source rust cargo build. I want the error messages on the terminal to make them a little bit more clear. Well, oh, we need an in too, right? Yep. Uh, extender messages. There you go. We just needed an in too. You can see the dot dot. Excellent. So this is for getting the content string. I think we could also have a function. So of like, perhaps stream, get content stream. Because now we have like the liberty of doing like all the ways we're gonna handle our our responses, right? So we can have a string one. Um, we can also have what one that handles. I mean, we could handle JSON, but do we want to handle JSON? Do we want to leave that up to the user? I think I would rather leave that up to the user. I think. Because maybe we can create like a really cool JSON deserializer. But again, I, I, I don't know. So let, let's do the following. Let's create, yeah, the get content stream. And how stream is going to function is that we're going to have to pass it some sort of callback function, right? So function. And what we're gonna do is here, our content. So let's do dot expect. Here, what we can do is content dot Because we want to stream it asynchronously as well, right? So 
but if we want to call it asynchronously okay this is a this is a cool challenge to do how are we gonna stream the body like pull it constantly while at the same time so i think that's the big the big question that we have What do you think? What do you guys think? Because we need to be able to we, we, like the user is going to be the one that holds it perhaps in some sort of way. And perhaps the user will build the the promise around that. Let's think about this. Mohammed, if you have any ideas, I'm I'm all ears. Because we don't want the user like while the while it's fetching, we don't want it to block the user, right? So we would probably want to create some sort of promise that calls the callback function. I don't think I, I'm, we are just viewers. Okay. But let, let me try something. Let me try something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get content stream and I'm going to create a new, a new structure. Body stream. Let's create this. So the body stream is going to contain a response. So that's what that's what it's gonna that's what it's gonna have. And actually it's gonna it's probably gonna need to have the exact same, so probably a mutex. Right? And it's probably gonna need a, the thread pool, so RC thread pool rayon thread pool. And then for the implementation, so extender implement body stream. What we're probably going to want to do is have some sort of, no, we don't want the response anymore. Actually, we want a, a, a receiver. It will be standard, standard sync MPSC receiver and start finish or no and length stat finish or no I, I, I don't get uh, the comment Mohammed um uh, I do you mean like length for what for the content length or Let's not. Let's have a a buffer. It's gonna be an arc mutex of a vector of u eight. So this is what we want. And here we wanna want a function called fetch, which takes in self. And what fetch is gonna do, it's, let's call, let's have one pull. This one's gonna return a Boolean. 
And it's gonna look very similar to this one. And let's also have a an atomic. So let's call this is done. Which what this will basically be is an arc atomic boolean boolean uh atomic bool is that how it's called atomic bool yep okay so what this atomic bool will basically do if it's done so we're gonna do this and we are gonna pull let's just have an is done one and let's have a, a pull one as well so what we're going to do here is um self dot is done yeah we won't need a lock we're just going to need to fetch the value fetch fetch or fetch not get mute not load and for load we're gonna use ordering sequential let me import ordering not this is not the ordering that i wanted um or ordering atomic ordering there you go okay and then we're gonna want to pull the values right so self and this is going to return a reference to a couple of bytes and what we are going to do is when we pull we're going to take the buffer so self dot buffer dot lock um dot expect expect um let's do buffer poisoned so let's do let mute buffer equals this and what we're going to do is we're going to do buffer dot drain Can we do this? So what does drain return? Uh, it returns an iterator. Hmm. Okay, so let's do let length equals buffer dot length. Can we do uh, an R raw? converts from bytes, right? So raw from bytes. Can we do a raw new? Create a new raw object of length. Yeah, we can do from bytes. And then we could do the buffer, the whole buffer. let raw equals this and we're going to return the raw yeah raw and then we're going to do buffer dot clear and finally we will return the raw amazing is this the best way to do it probably not but we are dealing with r at the end of the day so having like um, lifetimes and stuff, we're definitely going to need to do memory allocations, but I guess you do with what you've got. So I'm just going to place here a comment. Is there a better way to do this? We will always need memory allocations, question mark. Okay. Okay. So we have our poll method and we have our is done method. And we get this by calling the get content stream. Here we're gonna 
return a body stream. So what we're going to do here, return OK body stream. And the body stream, yeah, is done. Buffer, OK, awesome. We'll have the mm, thread pool, which will be OK, because the response doesn't have a reference to the thread pool, right? But it probably should. So let's go to response. Let's add here the thread pool. Should be the RC of the thread pool of the rayon thread pool. We can do RC clone solve the thread pool. Our the buffer we can do like a bet like an arg new default default i think I, I think we can do default default for this one i think we can do default default for all of them so we can do like dot dot default default yeah okay we can't do this okay i'm getting so many messages sorry for that so let's do um is done default default and buffer default default amazing 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 cool 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 because now the actual response we can have here so the the response can actually have a function new let's do this in another implement block because we don't want to pass that on to r we want to keep that in the Rust world. So this will be the response and this one will take in the response. And it's also gonna take in the, the pool, which should be the RC rayon red pool. Cool. And this will return self what we're gonna do here is that in the pool we're gonna we're gonna first create the buffer so that buffer equals arg new mutex new vec new if we have res that content length get response dot response container right 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 so we will need the urec response that's what we'll need content length content type yeah just not http version okay if we had the content length we might be able to put that in the buffer for now but we will set it later those are implementation details that we can focus on later. So add a reserve capacity for the content length, content length, if possible. Cool. So we have our buffer. Now we can do the the pool dot spawn. We can spawn an operation. We will need to move stuff into it. Let's put it on a different scope just in case. And let's do the following. Let's do let buffer equals arc clone our clone at buffer borrow the buffer amazing and here we're going to take in the response so let res equals res into reader so now our response is a reader value and what we're going to do is going to do we're going to import use io read 
right? So we just imported our, our read. We can do while let some values equals res dot read. No, because this is not how it works, right? So we'll need to read into a buffer directly. Pull some bytes from this source into this specified buffer. So we're gonna do um we're gonna do let while because we don't want to lock for every single uh, we're gonna plan I need to do a loop. So let buffer equals buffer dot lock dot expect poisoned cool we have here our buffer let's make it mutable let read bytes so this is how many bytes we have read so read um buffer no we're gonna need to do from the response right so res that read and we're gonna read it into our buffer And this should return some sort of result, right? Which could fail. And if we fail, we want to gracefully, we're going to match, right? So match red bytes. So if there is an error, let's log it. Let's do an ePrint. Let's print out the error. If it's okay. And so we're going to do this. And we're going to break the loop and break. If it's okay, we're going to get the number of red bytes. And if red bytes is equal to zero, then we break. And if it's just okay, then we we continue with her loop. Looks good to me. Looks, looks, looks good, looks good. Amazing. Once it's done, so once we break, we do so let's do let is done equals arc new and this arc new of an atomic boolean new of false right so it doesn't start as done so now we do is done dot store true and we want the ordering to be sequential Right, so we need this to be after the loop. Perfect. I think this is going to work. At the end here, we return the body stream with the uh, is done with the uh, buffer and with the uh, we don't really need a the, like the, a reference to the thread pool.
Cool. Let's build this our extender document. Okay, what went wrong? Line 217. Right. So yeah, we don't do response content anymore. We just straight up dot swap. Is that one replace, right? Replace the actual value with So we can do here HTTP client dot threadful dot clone. You're aware your oh, my camera has no signal. Oh, thank you, Mohammed, for telling me. I had no idea. Uh, so yeah, this is this Elgato thing is. There you go. I, 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 I bought a, a different capture card because my Elgato I, I hadn't had the, the best experience if that's what if that's how you how you can say it perhaps okay, there you go now it compiled if it if it goes it, if it has no signal again just tell me please that that's thank, thank you for telling me cool so now we can do R dev tools install. And let me do something. I'm gonna like make bars for now. I'm gonna do something. Because right here, build cran flags. Yeah, I don't want J equals two. I want J equals twelve at least. Just just to make it build faster on this. I have many cores. I should be able to take of uh, to make use of those cores. Thank you, Mohammed, so much for telling me. Okay. So now we should be able to to stream the the responses, right? So if we go back here, when we do send request, now we will need um, a, f a function that gets the get body string, right? This will have to take in a response. So let's do here this equals a function just response 
I'm gonna, but what this is basically going to do is going to do a promises then. And this promises then is going to do a promises then on, on the response. And on fulfilled, is that how it is? Promises then on. Unfulfilled, yes. Unfulfilled. Fulfilled, yes. It's such a weird word. So unfulfilled, it's going to be a function that takes in the, the, the actual response. And let's do like a get body string on full field just to have it like outside and let it jit and what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna do um live the rs we're gonna run this this function get content string resp get content string So unfulfilled, we're going to run get body string on fulfilled. Amazing. So why is the LSP not for LSP restart? Okay, doesn't matter work like this so let's test this on our on our example right so let's do send request and then instead of doing then print we're gonna do get body string and then after that we're gonna do the promises then print now we can do our extender document I don't know why it's not attached to that file. It's weird. Okay. Now we can do that tools. Install. Again, I have many cores. I don't know why Cran doesn't let me use them. We should probably take that from certain, some sort of environment variable. I don't know on Windows though how we would do it. But there you go, it's installed. Perfect. Um let's run our example. Hmm. Unhandled promise error operator is invalid for atomic vectors. Is it because we do here like the response, get content string. Hmm, but where is this this promise error? And where is it invalid for atomic vectors? Where do we have an atomic vector? So here we get string contents. Oh, we do the get content string right here. Okay, so that's the problem, right? So let's go back to our live at RS and because when we once we send a request. Oh, okay. Once we send the request, we immediately get back the the response. Right. So here, go to definition, the response. Right, 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 right. And 
we don't want to perhaps so we want to maybe this is what we want and have here uh, an empty return. Okay. Okay, I think we're going to do this. We're going to implement a way to print the different objects that we have and I think we're going to be okay for now. Um let's try to get the the streaming API going on because I I really want to get that going. I think it's going to work really coolly. Amazing. Okay. So let's run our example. Yep, there you go. It works. Perfect. And now, if instead of running the... On the example, instead of running the get body string... Let's do a stream body, right? So when we stream the body, we're going to want some sort of callback, which by default, it should be like an, an empty function that does nothing. And that it takes like bytes and does nothing with them. Okay. So internally, yeah, it works. Cool, cool. What, what we want to do then is on the... Ta, 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 because here we have our body stream, right? So what we're basically going to need to do is create, based on this, um, a new promise that... Or not a new promise promise but yeah like a, like a new promise that basically tells us when we are done streaming and yeah i guess that's what what we'll need to do cool so let, let's get to work so in here we do a instead of get content stream let's do a get content stream right and the get content stream will return the a body stream the body stream has two methods and let me do here implement body stream because we're going to need this for definitely okay body stream there you go okay so our body stream has two methods has is done and we have poll poll returns bytes like raw bytes and is done basically tells us if it's done. So what we're going to need to do is create a promise. So let's copy this. Let's paste it right here. So here we are creating a, a little promise. We're going to check if it's done. So is done. This will basically be the body stream. And there's going to be body stream is done. Right? So um, if it's done, so if it's done, we're going to resolve right now with null. But later on, we will probably want to, to resolve with something better. But for now, null, I think, is kind of what we got. <laughs> 
if it's not done, then what we're going to do is we're going to pull it. We're going to try to get the, the, the raw bytes. So raw bytes will equal um, body stream pull. And if length, let's do length raw bytes is not is, is greater than zero then we're gonna recursively call oh no like okay so let's do this right like this right pull recursive right so if it's greater than zero what we are gonna do is that we're gonna call let's do a, our callback we're gonna call our callback so callback raw bytes amazing and then we're going to call the later one cool so now we're going to do stream body this wouldn't be string right so just stream body unfulfilled stream body unfulfilled and we're going to call it with the response so this would be yeah, with the response, I don't know if we can, how we do that, if we, will we have to carry it? Let's, let's go to our promises, done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to need a, to be a single function. Yeah, we can carry it then. So we can do this like this. So response and here pass on the callback. This should work. So meanwhile, I'll have like, is there something good, like a good website where we can do like stream? Because I don't think this one is very good for streaming because the responses are so small. I don't know, Mohammed, if you have some sort of idea. We could try to download like a file from the internet. Let, let's test it out first with this one. So get, um, let's call it, let's do stream body. I still called it string. Uh, okay. And our callback is going to be print. Um, cancel. Let's do document again. And let's do install. Oh, yeah. Dev tools. Install. Let's run the example, right? We just stream body and print. Okay, we're missing pull interval. Pull interval, interval. Pull interval, right? And here when we stream, because we do have one for For send request, right? So let's do here like dot pull interval equals pull interval. Oh, we need to install first.
cool, cool, cool. Okay, my camera is working. Awesome. Amazing. Okay, why am I still getting... Oh, it's dot pull interval. Oh, my God. Install. But this should work. It should just print like the the raw bytes of two hundred. Okay, a bunch of times. Will it work? It doesn't seem to be working. Oh, why? No, I guess you can create a wrapper for the OpenAI that returns the stream data and not having the issue of waiting until the OpenAI finished the whole text. Yeah, that that could be a really cool imp like side project built with this library. So let me go ahead and restart my example and, and let's see what's going on. So why is there no client attached? There you go. Okay. Example. Just took a while to start. Hm. Okay. This word. Okay. 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 So this is the call back. Would be print, right? It's still not working, but let's go to verbs. Here, basically, what we're doing is unfulfilled stream body unfulfilled. If you get here, we get is done. If it is done, we resolve null. Else, we pull it, we take the byte, we take the length. Is that the problem maybe that Okay, let's do this. Um So we'll need if it's done and length raw bytes is greater than 0. So if there's nothing in the buffer then we resolve else we do the other steps okay oh, this is equal to zero so only if there's nothing in the buffer okay it's fine So it has to be done and the length of the buffer has the and the buffer has to be empty. That makes sense. Should probably make a make file. It's still not working. Can we print the raw bytes right here? And the is done. I'm gonna make a make file really quickly. Make file dot phony um, install 
So install, what we're going to do is our script dash E our extender document and dev tools install. So let's, let's bring these values. Um, Because on the Rust side of things, oh, this is perfect. Okay. If there's an error, we read the bytes into the buffer, then we store them. Yep. And here we can drop the buffer just in case to liberate it as much as possible i'm gonna go for some coffee while it compiles Oh no, I exited. Okay. R script example that R. Okay. So we are getting stuff <laughs> printed, right? So let, let's let's traverse this a little bit. Let's look for true. So here it's done. And do we ever get a raw that's not zero? So let's look for raw from one to nine. Raw one, two, three, four, five, six. Eight, nine. So we only get raw zero from what I'm looking at. So maybe that's the mistake that I'm doing. Yeah, it looks like I'm only getting raw zeros. So shh, let's get let's get um red bytes equals length of raw bytes and here we can just call in red bytes just so that we don't repeat the computation many times red bytes okay so it looks like we never have Row one or two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. So for some reason we are not getting the from bytes. I thought this would work, right? Because we take the buffer and here we read into the buffer. Now maybe we just need to return like a 
I don't want to do this because of how tough it is on memory. But I guess that's what it is. Not my favorite thing to do, but what can we do about it? So let's do let values equals buffer dot into that clone. Then return the values. Is that what we need? Make install. Oh, I don't like that approach. I really don't. Because we're like allocating memory over and over and over every time we pull. But since R doesn't have references, I guess we have no other choice. I think that's just kind of like the nature of, of the R programming language. Let's see if that if that helps, like just printing out the, the buffers. Cause this is weird. Oh, let me make it install. I don't know if the problem is with my ROS code or if it is with my R code. That's where I'm not sure yet. Okay, so our buffer is empty. <laughs> Apparently, like, do we just get no response? Is, is that just a problem? Is the is a problem that once we stream the body, we just get nothing? Is that it? Like, if we stream for like from the like the main website, yeah, we're getting nothing right here. Let's look for for a file. Um, dumb iris data set. If you read from like a raw file on raw, something like this. Response closed before all the bytes were read. Huh.
So why is this happening? So w what's going on? Pull some bytes from the source into the specified part of how many bytes were read. This function does not provide any guarantees of what it blocks for waiting data, but if an object needs to block for a read content, it will typically signal via error. If the return value of this method is okay, then it implementation is guaranteed that n is greater than or equal to zero and smaller than or equal to buff length. Um, a non-zero indicates that the buffer has not been filled with any version of the source. If n is equal to zero, then this reader can be reached. Is it because of the length of the buffer that we have an empty back? Read vectored. Like read except that it reads into a slice of buffers. No. Let's import read extension. Um, no, because I, I think I might be making the mistake here. Maybe we don't need a break when it's zero. Let's check with that. Maybe that's just something of the URF API. Response body closed before all the bytes were read. But why is it being closed though? Okay, let's make buffer something different. So here instead, let's have a, a mutex to an array to a tuple, to a tuple right? Let me look this up. Rust read into back buffer. An empty back has an empty buffer. Read is relatively low level. Okay, it just makes this slice and populates it. You probably want read to end instead. Read to the L file, it means reading until the connection is closed. Press one of those. Like, uh, in any case, you would. You can use take to in combination return. No, return will read until the end of the stream. It will be closed. If you want to read a certain number of bytes, you can have read exact. Ugh, but I don't want to read exact, nor read to end, nor read to string. Read buff. But this, these are nightly APIs. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see.
Let's look at buff reader. Maybe we need to wrap it in a buff reader. Read all the buys until you're not found this source, placing them into the buff. New with capacity, get rough, get mute, buffer. Yeah, because this always takes in a mutable slice. The question is, how do I? Because if I write into the buffer, I, I would want the buffer to grow. Read the exact number of bytes required to fill up the buff. Creates an adapter which will read at most limit bytes from it. After which it will always return EOF. Any your read errors will not count towards. Okay. So maybe I can do buffer I can do res dot take. And maybe I can take like 1000 bytes and I can have here like uh but this still isn't what I want <laughs> oh yeah I, I would have to do a read to end yeah so read to end right so read all the bytes until you have five placing them into the buffer all bytes read from the source will be appended to the specified buff this function will continuously call a read to append more data to the buff until read returns either zero. Okay, I can do this. So let temp buffer. I can do like a let mute temp buffer. And this can equal an array. Oh, where did it go? This can equal, and I am still clicking the wrong. Yeah, so this will continue being a back of U8. So this is the exact same. This doesn't change. But I will create a 1024 temporary buffer. What I will do is I will red bytes equals res dot, well, Sorry, um, res dot read into my temp buffer. Right, so this is how many bytes I read. Of course, this can error. So right here, and we're gonna drop the buffer because now we have our temp buffer. We don't really need oh. Well, this buffer, we're going to need it, but inside of here. So if it's okay and we get some value, we would lock the actual buffer. Then buffer let's do remove this buffer dot Extend from slice, I believe. Yeah, so extend from slice. And this slice will be temp buffer. 
from the beginning all the way to the number of red bytes, which in this case would be red, but let's call it N. Maybe this will work. Let's see. Okay, I almost have to go. I think I have like 10 or 20 more minutes. But we are, I think we are really close to getting our streaming API working. And finally here, um, if OK zero, I think we need this, this will work. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. Let's go back to our slash 200. Uh huh, that's, that's definitely 200, okay. Cool. Why is it not printing the other ones though? I think we need the OK zero equals break. Yeah, Mohammed, we we got it. <laughs> um, with still some bugs in it, but it's better than nothing. I think we can go back to using the the raw here. We can do let raw equals raw. From bytes at buffer and return the raw. Here we go. There you go. We got all of them printed. It's not bugs, it's features. Yeah, it's not bugs, it's features, definitely. So the thing that's interesting here is that. We are getting all of them printed at the exact same time. S why is that? Like, that's a, a funny question because why are we getting like all of them? printed at the same time instead of is it because of the later run now one is that it which could be could that that, that could be like the the thing like maybe we need to wrap the um this into how do you call it into into some sort of promise because I don't want them old. I want them to be able to intercalate. Like I want them to be able to, let's go back to our verbs that are, 
because here if it's done and the red bytes is not equal to zero and if the red bytes is greater than zero we do the callback right I'm waiting for the day when you'll consider publishing this with library on GitHub. Sir, there are very few R packages that do async web request. Yep, that's exactly the reason why I'm working on this and try to get it to a good state. <laughs> but there are still things that that need to be kind of figured out. So maybe if I put this inside a bytes and we do something like print says dot time and then we print the bytes what will we get object bytes not found right i misspelled the bytes Yeah, so all of them were returned at 36. Like all of the callbacks. Why though? Like the, the thing that I don't understand is why all of them waited until the 36 to run. So that's that's one part that I am still not very sure about. We have pull interval, we get our bytes, we get length, we pull them. I maybe have an idea that is No, but here, it's like the, the, the amount of time I get the lock for the buffer is really small. It's not big at all. And then this continues. This is another, another are not, they, these are on completely separate threads. Maybe it has something to do with the client, with the, with the agent. Because here we have our, a little agent. Um, agent keeps state between requests. By default, no states such as cookies get between requests. But by creating agent and as an entry for the request, we keep the state. Um, that shares the same underlying connection pool and other state. Yeah, so we have a, an underlying connection pool. Okay, this is something that I would need to investigate and see if, for example, our I said maybe because I have it all wrapped in a then, but no, it, it, they should, from what I understand, like once once it's here, it's here, right? Like once it, <coughs> I'm sorry. Callback bytes, for instance, the time. So if we do like here, print hello, like later, and then we do like a later, later, hello, later. And then we do another do request. How does it look like? Hello and hello later get printed first and then the other ones get printed, right? Okay, the one thing that I don't understand is why it's waiting for all of the other ones to to be done. That's like the only thing that I'm like, what? That I don't get.
because these are like completely different. Like, how many do I need for them to start like actually intercalating? And let's give these a fucking currency of four. Okay, so some run at 37 and a couple of them run at 38. But I don't have a promise hall anymore. Like I'm just running the, the request as they are. I'm gonna remove the the sleep for one second. Yeah, they still kind of run. So let's add a print here. Let's do a then um, and in this then let's do a a print res or let's do a print sys dot time. So this is when it responds and then we just return to like we just continue the, the pipeline as it is. Promises then. Fifteen, fifteen. Okay, so th this makes much if we set it to one to one level of concurrency. One, two, three, four. Yeah, every second we get a new request. But why are we not getting the responses as we get the the requests? That's like my big question. Like, yep, look at the they they all ran right at the end. Once everyone was done sending the requests, then we got the the response. And that's the thing that I'm not understanding right now, why that's happening. Is it because then re like returns a new promise? Is that it? That could be it, but we're probably gonna need two implementations. One for for when send request. Like, do we want send request to always be a promise? I think we do. I think it's because of this then. Okay. But I, I, I think it's fine. Because we, we do the then, right? And all of these promises were already on the, like on the queue. And here we add another later, later. We end here another later, 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 right? And here we pull recursively. Not this, the, these promises are fine. The ones that are weird are, are these ones. 
they seem to not be getting added to the queue. Because maybe of this then. Okay, I think we are gonna have to leave that for another session. I'm gonna keep reading. Like, is is there something that's that I'm not thinking about? Promise chaining, then, 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 right? Because this takes, then takes a promise and it does unfulfilled. And the finally one, because what's the difference between finally and um, then functions to access the eventual result of the promise, regardless of the state of the promise, then call then. The call to then is non blocking, that is, returns immediately, so that doesn't, so it does not immediately return the value of the promise. Instead, you pass logic you want to execute then in the form of function callbacks. If you fulfill, I'm fulfilled. If we call that from the promise successful resolution with a single argument, the result value. If you provide a non rejected callback, Use Arlen to convert unfulfilled and unrejected arguments to functions. This means that if you use formulas to create a very compact anonymous function using dot to access, okay. Chaining promises, get data frame async, and then we do it then, right? This just makes all the sense in the world. For readability and convenience, we provide catch and finally solutions. Yeah, this was just like the unfulfilled one. Huh. Create a resolved or rejected promise. Course to a promise. Promise that throws an area of the object cannot be converted. Maybe what we need is an as an an as promise. Promise phrase right because all of these return. I guess because yeah yeah we made a lot of progress. I'm still a little bit confused on why. On why these ones are not like they like the this then runs perfectly, but these this other then does not. And I am not sure why that is. Like if we do a print here, print here. Now let me do set GX before set GX not kind of true. Like, are these just not getting executed until way later? Is that what's going on? Maybe. Maybe. Okay, so we are getting here quite a lot, right? So it is running. Okay, <laughs> what's going on here? Okay, let's run this again. I I I'm not sure because the pipe, basically what it does is basically just just do the exact same thing that 
just what that that uh, then does, right? So we are getting here, right? We do get the the here thing. So what if what what about here? If red byte is greater than zero. So that's the thing. These th this poll runs, but the number of red bytes doesn't increase until all of the other ones are done, apparently. Why is that? Yep, look, all of the here ones run. So if we do here and then we do like a later, later, And we do it like, let's say after five seconds, let's remove many of these ones. Let's keep it at like two. Here, here. Okay, let's set this to 10 seconds. So we want to see two of them and then a third one after 10 seconds. There you go. Okay, so it's working. Maybe the agent is getting overwhelmed. That could be, but that, I, 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 that wouldn't make much sense to me. But who knows? I'm going to read on, on what UREC does for that. Because maybe if we, if we create the client inside of here, right? Will that, will the exact same behavior happen if we create the, the, the client from scratch? So if we do like, URL. Oh yeah, I need to pipe this. Okay, okay. So it is the client, right? So because we are streaming, I think the client is not very good at streaming multiple things at the same time. Oh, well, not that it's good, is that while reading, it blocks. That would be my guess. So just to see if we can have like a, a fix right here. Can we do res dot perhaps instead of into reader? Know that if you use return on the resulting a malicious server might return enough bytes to exhaust available memory. Yes. You should use take to limit this. Status text, remote address, HTTP reversion. Is there like a try read? Because I don't want to block. Okay. Um
this is fine. Like, we can deal with this. We can look for Urac blocking Reed. Yeah, I'm guessing when when using the the read, it blocks, which I guess is it's fine. We can, yeah. Stream socket pulling depends on protocol level. Something has to read full response of the body before the CPU connection ready to send connections. Once again, that's done with the into reader into string etc. It looks like you do read the body, but only two hundred. That means two oh three four oh three is five hundred etc. Will not get returned from the pool and get closed when the response is dropped. If you're pullable, that creates this out of put back into the pool and drop if possible. We could some explicit API for that. On the on response object, we could add something like this. Because I know one of my apps, I use Eric to read write key value server. When I perform writes, the status of response is sufficient to no failure for success. However, if I do not read the response body, the connection doesn't return to the pool since the data remains on the stream. Since seems odd requ and requires um, in my app adding an explicit read on the response in order to allow the stream to return to the pool. Um, I was curious about this. Okay. For what it's worth in simple scenario. Okay, this is fine. So we will just need to write documentation telling the user, hey, if you want to stream multiple, like, asynchronously stream at the exact same time, and when I, when I say that, I don't mean, like, calling on multiple, like, like, how would you say that, like, I mean, if I'm not wrong, they still asynchronously do the stuff. They just don't. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to look for a way to... To what? To... To say that and perhaps go into... Oh, my camera... Uh, it's back. It's back. <laughs> oh, I need to change the. <laughs> yeah, I need to change the 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 capture card. But what I say, well, what I was saying is that we just need to document the users to use multiple clients if they need to stream asynchronously on many requests, because if we do it like that, let me look for here. Yeah, we don't have any here's anymore. Set GX not cran, make install. Because it's working. Like we are asynchronously streaming. Let's look for a big download file. Um well not a big one, but like HTTP streaming test test URL. Video stream faster. Let me look for HTTP streaming test. Stream tester. No, this didn't work. Video stream tester. Yeah. Is there a good way to test this? Because this works, right? But this is not like the most beautiful example ever. Let's create a bunch of them.
Yeah, all of them will pretty much run at the exact same time. This is cool. This is cool stuff. It works really well, but... Yeah, just, uh, let's... Well, what's a file that you can download over the internet? That's... Let's look for x86 uh, manual. Let's look for the 8086 manual. 8086 manual. Here it is. Let's download this one. Copy link address. And let's make, yeah, four of them are fun. Okay, look, we're streaming data. Amazing, amazing, amazing. We can, and maybe like, instead of printing, let's just print the length, length. Yep. So these are, we can stream two of them. We are effectively streaming on two URLs at the exact same time. The only thing that we found is needed is we need to create a new client per asynchronous stream. That's kind of what I understood, that if we start streaming, we kind of acquire a lock. So I'm going to see if I can go into URAC and because this sounds like a bug. Um, let me do a git commit, um, git commit, chore, adds, um, not, this is not a chore, feed, adds, streaming API. Sure. Okay. Thank you all so much for watching the stream. Um, uh, let me do git remote dash B, git remote set URL set url origin and i need the get url so git at github that com slash nd kentaram slash async http dot git git push what do you mean it does not appear to be a git repository nd kentaram async http dot git yeah, what's wrong with this? Git at github.com. All right, this is dot. There you go. Perfect. Okay, thank you all so much for watching the stream. Um, I know my camera has been bugging a little bit. I already ordered a new capture card. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you on the next stream where we will probably make this better or maybe even go into the UREC um, code base and see what's going on with the, with the stream. Thank you all. Bye-bye. And my camera is not working. Wow. Just in time. Why is it not working? Why do I have no signal? Do I need to? Like, is, I, I have no idea. Okay. See you. Bye.